my philosophy of partial fractions is that you should know what a partial fraction decomposition is. You should be able to apply partial fraction decompositions to simple rational functions. And you should know theoretically what a partial fraction decomposition of a more complicated function would look like, but you shouldn't actually be doing complicated partial fraction decompositions by hand. Let's try to justify this philosophy by looking at an example. In particular, let's see if we can use a partial fraction decomposition to find this indefinite integral. The first hurdle you have to get across if you're going to use partial fraction decompositions is to factor the denominator of this polynomial. And we probably don't know how to factor this denominator by hand. It doesn't have any real root. So usual factoring techniques involving using the rational root test and polynomial division aren't going to work. So how can we expect to go from here to here? And the real answer to that question is technology. We could use Wolfram Alpha or MATLAB or Mathematica or something like that to factor this polynomial. But then we're in this awkward situation because all of those programs would just compute to this indefinite integral for you. And all of them would do the entire partial fraction decomposition. So we find ourselves in this very artificial situation where we are using technology to start the problem, to go from here to here. But then when we could use technology to finish the problem as well, we say no more. From here on, we're doing this by hand. And it's very hard to actually justify that. But suppose we did say, Okay, now that we have gotten this factorization, we'll proceed by hand. We have two irreducible quadratics in the denominator. They're both just raised to the first power. So the partial fraction decomposition becomes this. And the first thing we'll observe here is that there's no guarantee we'll be able to integrate any of these terms. So there is no guarantee that doing this partial fraction decomposition will actually help with this integral. But let's try to maintain an optimistic attitude. 
our goal now is to find A, B, C, and D. And from previous work, it seems like we should probably multiply both sides by this denominator. We do so when we multiply this here, this and this cancel, when we multiply here, this and this cancel. But now our problems compound. We can't use the heavy side method to easily find A, B, C, and D. The heavy side method was to select values of X that make these equal to zero. But there are no values of x that make these equal to zero, or at least no real values of x. They are irreducible quadratics. So what do we do? More work. We foil this out or distribute, I guess I should say. And we distribute this out. And then we combine like terms. Like so. What does that do? This is a polynomial, and this is a polynomial. And two polynomials are equal if their coefficients are equal. So to have this equality, the coefficient in front of the x cubed here has to equal equal the coefficient in front of the x cubed here. This is zero x squared. So the zero here, we of course don't have it written in, has to equal equal this. Two X, so this two has to equal this. And our constants have to be equal. And here's another headache. Um, at some point in your mathematical career, Many of you will have learned to solve systems of linear equations. It's not really a prerequisite for this course. I mean, it sometimes gets taught in algebra, but not all the time. So you don't necessarily know how to actually do anything with this. If we do solve it, we 
we find that A equals 3.8, B equals 0, C equals negative 1.8, D equals negative 0 0.2. So that was a long road. If it didn't seem that way, it's because I did a lot of the grunt work, like going from here to here to here off camera. Likewise, solving a system of linear equations, we don't necessarily know how to do that. So I just did it off camera. But we've done the partial fraction decomposition. We can take these coefficients and plug them into A, B, C, D up here. But now what? It's not in the least bit obvious how to take either of these integrals. I signposted at the beginning of the problem that that might happen, but I said that we would remain optimistic. Well, I am no longer optimistic. I am come face to face with the reality that neither of these integrals can be taken in an obvious way. I'm not saying it's absolutely impossible. Maybe if you did some trick maybe if you completed the squares in the denominators, we could make these look like an arc tangent or something like that. But I am going to shrug and give up. I just, um, this the complications of computing this integral are such that I would not try to do it by hand. And I'm not saying all of this to be discouraging. I mean, a little discouraging, but if I thought that partial fractions was a truly useless technique, I simply wouldn't teach it. I mean, there are applications to partial fractions once you get to math 330 with me, for example. We do use them in differential equations. It's just that part of mastering a technique is understanding the limitations of the technique. And the limitations of partial fractions is that they really only work well when the denominator factors into nice linear terms.